Hi, this is Jeff Spence, your Math 120 instructor for the Community College of Denver, and this is our lecture over Section 4C. Now, in Section 4D, we started looking at investments and the compounding, uh, the, uh, compounding schedules and how that makes money grow. We noticed that the more compoundings, the higher, uh, the, the more interest we gain. And, uh, but those were just looking at pl savings plans where you would invest a lump sum of money and just let it sit there over time. So you wouldn't make any more uh, investments or payments into the plan. You would just make a down payment of one, one investment, let it grow over a period of time. For this particular section, we're going to imagine that, let's say you can budget out a certain amount out of your paycheck and make payments each month and, um, and see how the money grows that way. What we'll find is that the money, money grows a lot quicker when you keep making uh, payments to it each time versus if you just let a lump sum grow. The other thing we're going to do is imagine that if you wanted to, um, say, have $10,000 for a down payment on a home in, say, five years or something, then we could figure out, we could reverse the formula and figure out what we would need to save, or sorry, what we would need to budget out each month in order for it to grow, say, to $10,000 in five years. So the book gives us the, or sorry, the PowerPoint gives us the savings plan formula, but I'm going to go away from that and show you the formula sheet formula that I've provided to you on D2L. So if you click the link on the front of D2L, you'll see the formula sheet. I recommend you download this, print this, because you're going to be able to take this with you into the exam and use all these formulas. So you don't have to memorize the formulas. And the nice thing is, is that this sheet shows them to, a, to you in a much more calculator-friendly way so that you can plug in the formulas without worrying about the order of operations. We let you know where all the parentheses need to go. We just want you to be able to get the answers and then interpret the answers and find the interest. So for section uh, 4B, you are switching back and forth between formula 4 and formula 5, depending on if it was continuous compounding or compounding on a monthly, quarterly, or daily schedule. Um, but for this particular section 4B, or 4C, excuse me, we're going to, since we have savings plans, we're going to use this formula here where instead of uh, we instead of investing a principal like in four formula four where we just hit, you know one time investment and just let it sit there we're going to imagine that we make regularly scheduled payments so that's the big difference between section 4b and 4c is that in 4b we just make a one time investment and in 4c we're raking regularly scheduled payments and we can figure out what it grows to in, in formula 7 or if we want to know what we want to save for and figure out what we need to budget as a monthly payment, we use formula eight. So let's look at some examples here. It says use the savings plan formula to calculate the balance after six months for an APR of 12% then monthly payments of $100. Give the interest as well. So since we know the monthly payments, we're gonna use formula seven and we wanna figure out what it's gonna to grow to. So I'm gonna copy and paste that over so you can see what I'm gonna do here. So we're using formula uh, number seven. All right, in this particular problem, I'm going to show you what the values are, and then I'm going to show you how to type this into the calculator. So the regularly scheduled payments are $100. We use a double parenthesis, one plus the APR. Well, the APR is a decimal, is 0.12. We're making monthly payments, so the N is 12. Oh, I forgot to do this. I, I you got to remember to do this. Every one of these formulas with an n times y, it's good to do that off to the side because when we type exponents into our calculator, it needs to know that number. Uh, I don't want to insert an extra parenthesis. So in this case, n is the, the, the monthly schedule. So we're making monthly payments. So n is 12. And the number of years, well, we only have six months. So six months as a year is a half of a year. So 12 times 0.5 equals 6. So when I type into the exponent here, I'm going to do my exponent key, and then to the 6, n times y. And then I have a minus 1. Then I have to divide by another parenthesis here, 0.12, divided by 12. So now I'm going to show you that in the calculator. I already have it in there, but let me clear it out. Okay, so $100, double parenthesis, double parenthesis there, 1. So I'm just following the formula directly, plus 0.12 divided by 12, and the parenthesis. 
So you got to follow this step by step to the sixth minus one and the parenthesis there divided by and then one more parenthesis 0.12 divided by 12. Press enter and this amount will grow to $615. $615 and how many cents here? If we round to the nearest cent, 20 cents. So that's how much it'll grow to after six months. Now to find the interest, the interest in general is always the total payments minus, um, or no, excuse me, I have this backwards. It's the amount, the, the amount that it grew to all right, the future amount minus the total payments. So in this case, the interest, well, the amount that it grew to was the 615.20. So we use that answer there. All right, well, the total payments, we made six monthly payments of $100. So six times 100, that should give us the $600. So 615 minus Oh, 615.20 minus 600, $15.20 is our interest. Okay, let's look at the next example here. So, number two, it says find your balance and in interest after six years with an APR of 7.3% and monthly payments of 340. So we're imagining that you could budget out 340 each month. You want to see what it's going to grow to after six years with an APR of 340. So once again, since we know the payment, we're going to use formula 7. So I'll paste that in here. We're using this formula. Let's type it in. So we're figuring out the amount. The amount is going to be equal to the payment, 340, double parenthesis, 1 plus the APR. Well, the APR is 7.3%. So as a decimal, that's 0 0.073 divided by 12. Forgot again to do this. I got to remember to do this. N times Y. Okay, N times Y. Well, remember we have monthly payments again, so N is 12, and we're talking about six years this time, not six months, but six years. And 12 times 6 is 72. So I'm going to take that to the 72nd power. All right. And then I'm going to minus 1 in the parenthesis. And then I'm going to divide by 0.073 divided by 12 again because we're having monthly payments. All right, now into the calculator. So let me clear up my screen from the last problem. We have 340, double parenthesis, 1 plus 0.073 divided by 12, and the parenthesis to the 72nd, because there's going to be 72 compoundings over this period of time. Oop, minus 1. Okay, looks like I'm good. Remember, if you ever make an error, both calculators have arrow keys that you can go back and just delete or overwrite whatever you, whatever you messed up. Okay, so keep that in mind. You don't have to clear your whole line if you ever make an error on these calculators. And then divided by parenthesis 0.073 divide it by 12 again, and the parenthesis. And this will tell us how much our 340 is going to grow to. 30,602 and 80 cents to the nearest cent. So equals 30,802, is that right? Oh, 602 and 80 cents. 602 and 80 cents to the nearest cent okay so then once again the interest is going to be what it grew to so that's going to be 30,602 and 80 cents minus the total payments well remember we made a payment each month of $340 for six years so $340 times 12 for each month times six years will tell us our total interest. So I'll just type that in real quick. 340 times 12 times six 
gives us 24,480. So when I do the 30,602.80 minus the 24,480, which is the amount that I just invested without interest, I'll get $6,122.80 in interest. Six thousand one one twenty two and eighty cents. So that's a pretty good amount of interest over six years with just simple monthly payments of three hundred and forty dollars. So that's really good. You know, if you invest invest a monthly payments each month, even a small sum, three hundred and forty might be a lot, but you could do less, you're still gonna get a fair amount of interest. We invested 24,480 over this period of time and tacked on 6,000 interest. That's a quarter per, that's basically 25% gain of interest. So it's a really nice thing to, to keep in mind. So I'm going to do the other two examples here uh, on the second half of the recording.